What's the word, y'all? Now, this is supposed to be a time of the year where everything is supposed to be calm. Pretty much free agency is over. You got like Avery Bradley signing and stuff like that. But for the most part, free agency is over. Teams are starting to come together because training camp is around the corner. Preseason's around the corner. Everything should be calm. This is supposed to be a time where us as basketball fans get to kick our feet up and just relax because we're about to go super hard in the next couple months. But nah, Ben Simmons and the 76 organization continues to keep us on our toes. And I want to say thank you to Ben. I want to say thank you to the 76ers because I got something to talk about today. I just I just assumed that the whole Ben Simmons thing was going to be over. He, he told them, hey, I'm not reporting, so trade me away. In my mind, I'm like, okay, that's the end of it. The next time we hear about Ben Simmons is him getting traded. Nah, because today it just got... It got even worse. From Shams, sources, Philadelphia 76ers players wanted to take a jet to Los Angeles this week to meet with Ben Simmons, but were informed not to come and that the three-time All-Star did not want to meet. The good old backwards DeAndre Jordan situation. They tried to get him. Was Doc Rivers involved in that as well? Is this Doc Rivers scheme? Every every time he has a player that wants to leave, he tries to meet them in private and lock them in a room until they decide they don't want to leave. Ben Simmons wasn't falling for that. Yeah. He's out in LA working out and he's like, don't waste it. My favorite thing about this whole article, shout out to the Athletic, not a sponsorship. My athletic subscription ends like this week and I'm trying to figure out if I want to re-up. But there are more details in the articles, you know, they a little paywall, but whatever. The core leaders of the 76ers, Joel Embiid, Tobias Harris, and Matisse Steibel. That's dope that Matisse Steibel is considered a core leader at his young age. A core leader? I know he's all defensive team, but he's still pretty young. Dog won't even started last year, and he's already a core leader? W. So they tried to book a PJ to, to go to, to California to meet with Ben, to talk to him, talk him off this ledge that he, he's on. And his team is like, bro, don't even waste your mileage, bro. Ain't nothing you can say that's going to stop me from wanting to be out. Every time... The whole Ben Simmons conversation has come up since the end of the the playoffs, you know, the seven-game series with the Atlanta Hawks. I feel like I'm beating a dead horse when I talk about it. The 76ers as an organization are in the wrong. Ben Simmons, the person, the player, is in the wrong. And guess who else is in the wrong? Us. As NBA fans, we are all in the wrong in this situation. And I just thought it was going to run its course. That after Ben Simmons told them that he wasn't coming to training camp, that the next thing I would hear was him getting traded. But no, it keeps going and keeps going and keeps going. 76 er organization, you are wrong when, when Doc Rivers comes to the podium and he doesn't word his words right. And now he gets aggregated all over the place when he's asked, is Ben Simmons a... a, a a quality point guard to win a championship, he say, I don't know. Is that the, the actual correct answer? Yes, it is. But when you're in front of a podium, when your second star player has a terrible series, you're supposed to be backing him up. You're supposed to be like, if you say, I don't know, you say, I don't know, because, well, we ain't done nothing. You don't say, Ben, I don't know if you're the guy, right? Ben Simmons is wrong from cutting all communications. Bro, they said that they cannot get in contact with the man. It's not one person within the organization that Ben Simmons saw in his last couple years that he's like, I mess with dude. I'll answer his calls. Oh, Tobias Harris, he was always cool to me. I answer his calls. Nobody has been able to get in contact with this man. That's petty. They're, they're, he's playing a petty game because he wants out so much he's playing a petty game. And me and you, when I say the fans, we're wrong because... Matisse Stiebel said this on JJ Reddick's podcast. Yes, Ben Simmons had a bad series. I am not saying that, that he don't deserve criticism because to score two points in all the fourth quarters in a seven-game series where you get paid that much money and looked at to be the secondary star is terrible. It's terrible. But he was not the sole purpose that that team lost that series. But it was all on his back because he was the biggest one. He passed up a dunk. He gave it to Matisse who missed the free throw. You know, everybody had their moments. Tobias Harris had a couple games where he was trash. Joel Embiid, who's one of the best players in the entirety of the league, had a couple games where he was trash. He had a couple fourth quarters, second halves, where he was bad. He wasn't the Joel Embiid we, we know he can be. Ben Simmons was bad. Matisse Stiebel fouled somebody when he shouldn't have fouled. Everybody has their own points. Doc Rivers didn't coach a good series. But since Ben Simmons had always had, like, question marks about his game and how it translates and because we always had question marks about Joel and Ben Simmons as teammates we all put it on his back when in reality yes he was a big part of it but he wasn't the reason 
Now, something else that came out by Brian Windhorse um, earlier today, and take it with, with a grain of salt because I know Brian Windhorse says a lot of stuff and it ain't always um, true. And I understand he gets aggregated a lot, which means that he'll say something and then these publications that take it out of context and just give you one sentence and it, even though he's talking for 40 minutes. But this is what it says. He says that Ben Simmons playing in front of 76ers fans is a factor in him wanting out of Philly. He doesn't want to be in front of those fans. I don't think he intends to ever show his face there again. Now, you can interpret that a couple different ways, right? Philly fans are always known to be on edge. Um, and I think that's what makes them one of the better fan base, in my personal opinion, that they're not afraid to tell you if you're on their team that you're trash. Um, I talked to JJ Redick about this recently. Uh, there was a game. I was there. Brooklyn versus Philadelphia, game one of the first round, right? JJ had a terrible game. And the fans in Philly booed him off the court, literally booed him off the court. And then guess what happened? Game two to game five or game six, I don't remember how many games it went. He was in, he was incredible. He was incredible. So there, you know what I'm saying? There's a little bit of give and take when you're booing your own players, but everybody has different personalities. I always parallel it to like, in 2K, they have different badges. Pat my back. Keep it real. Everybody's not going to respond well to their home fans saying boo to them. They just won't. And the second half of this, again, you can interpret it a couple different ways. He, I don't think he intends to ever show his face there again. What you mean, right? So if this man is traded to Minnesota, the one game they have in Philly every season, you don't think he's getting on that plane to get back to Philly? I find it hard to believe personally. I do believe if he gets traded, he goes to Philly, he gonna get his he's gonna get booed for the rest of his career in Philly. But I don't think this man is about to avoid games against the 76ers every single year. So far, the 76ers have not received an offer they deem enough to move Simmons in the franchise has wanted Simmons back to rejoin the Eastern Conference contender. Philly has no trade imminent, although teams are calling according to sources. I, I just feel like we're we're so far past the we want him back. If the man didn't answer your calls in the last three months, I don't even know how you can convince yourself that it's even a possibility. And and you know what's like salt into the womb? Let me let me show you what the heck. Before I started recording this video, let me show you something I saw on Instagram. And I'm like, bro, Ben, cut it out. On the great old page of House of Highlights, shout out to my, my family over there. Y'all follow me? Okay, yeah, y'all do. All right, just, just making sure, you know what I'm saying? I ain't been working with y'all for three years for y'all not to follow me. What do we see here? A workout video with Ben Simmons. This came out 23 minutes ago. Oh, brother. Make sure, let me make sure I ain't got my sound on. I don't know what type of music they be playing in these workouts. So Ben Simmons is working out. You got John Wall guarding him. Look what this man is doing. Stop. 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 We enough. Stop. Come on, bro. Stop. Why? Why does every sing Why does every single season this is how it goes? And now this is even crazier because we know, bro. Top comment says do it in the game. Every year, every year. Not falling for it this time. These comments back to be toxic, best believe. Let's see the rest. Cause I just saw that clip. Mm-hmm. I mean, yes, great, right? Shout out to ISO Joe. Give ISO Joe a job, please. The man been winning MVPs over in the big three. Like, these are all great, right? But when you watch these clips, do you see do you see a man that you believe is going to actually do this when it matters the most? Because that right there, hold on, pause that. That little move, he was doing in his rookie season. But since then, he hasn't done. Let's see what he's doing. Uh-huh. Oh. Yeah. Aiden has it right here. That's definitely game speed. Nobody's guarding up. They're just letting them score. This is this is not deep. This is not NBA quality defense. Shout out to ISO Joe again. But come on, man. ISO Joe is not trying to clamp up. And this right here. Okay, John Wall is actually trying and fouling the hell out of him. But bro, you 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 cannot drop a mixtape in the midst of all the things that's going on in your career right now. Because I personally believe this hurts him, bro. I do. If he's dropping this every single season, right? He's dropping this every single season. And then he goes into the next year and don't do none of it. Then what the heck? What are we, what are we doing this for? Now imagine the 2% of people that watch that and think, oh, he going to do that in game. And he don't do the game. You letting everybody down. You letting everybody down. And the timing of them dropping this is not a coincidence, bro. This ain't, this ain't something that happened six weeks ago. 
the source of this video dropped it 30 minutes ago and house of highlights be on their game they took it 10 minutes later but with all that being said i've mentioned this before i am not out on the ben simmons camp i do believe that he still has a, a ton of potential he needs to get his confidence up for one um i think it was meta world peace or or uh, um medicine for our tests what he's known as nowadays that said he would send ben simmons to a sport a sports psychologist 100 percent should be something that he's looking into um but i do believe that some people look at going to therapy as a weakness when in reality it is not uh, shit i'm look. oops I'm looking for a therapist as we speak. It's not a sign of weakness. It's just people get vulnerable. We we have people in a game of baseball get the yips where it's a mental block between what they what they can do and what they attempt to do or how they perform. Ben Simmons could be going through that. And a sports psychologist could, could really unopen or, or unlock something in Ben Simmons. When this man was drafted, people were talking about him being the next LeBron. He was the first overall pick. He won Rookie of the Year. He's been an all-star. He's been an all-NBA player. But at this point in his career... His value is low. His value is lower than it's ever been as a basketball player. Ever. And again, it's tough for the 76er fans because everybody, every one of the 76ers fans I've ever seen uh, in the last three to four months has wanted Ben Simmons out. And I don't blame you. But when that trade happens, and it happens to be three role players, or just nobody that's at the caliber of impact of Ben Simmons, you can't even be mad. Because part of part of the reason why his value is an all-time low is is the interpretation of his performances, and we play a big part in that. That's all I really want to say. Um, as we get closer and closer to the NBA season, I do plan on dropping more videos around here. I actually um, going to start looking at this channel as my main channel. I have some ideas, and I know y'all be taking that with a grain of salt because I be saying stuff like this all the time. But I'm actually very dedicated to this channel. I want to hit a million over here by the end of the 2021 20, 22 season, and I got a lot of work to do. So, uh, be expecting a lot of content over the next eight months or however long. Um, I appreciate you. Let me know about what you think about the Ben Simmons situation, and uh, I'll be back. I'll see y'all soon.